me just show you where the modern denominations come from, and I only have a short time to do this, but if we start at the top with false Christianity, the number one apostate church throughout history, we would start out, of course, with that which is Roman Catholic, okay? Then in 1054 AD, we have a split off from that, what's known as the Great Schism, AD 1054, and this is where your Orthodox comes from. And when we talk about Orthodox, sometimes known as East Orthodox, this could be Greek Orthodox, Russian Orthodox, any of that Eastern Orthodox religion. Now, the big separation between these two is that these Roman Catholics do the sprinkling, right? The Greek Orthodox, they still baptize babies, but they dunk them. They do it by immersion. You say, well, why are they dunking the babies? Here's why. Because these people that are Orthodox, they actually speak Greek. And they know that in the Greek New Testament, the word baptizo means to dunk underwater, to immerse. So they're not going to buy into a baby baptism because they speak the original language of the Greek. They're not going to listen to these people over here that are just deceiving the ignorant, saying, oh, baptism, that's just a sprinkling. Okay, so that's the split, and they split over other issues too. But honestly, I hate to say it, but these two aren't that different, okay? They split over baptism. They split over a few other issues. Still a lot of funny hats. Still a lot of idolatry. Still a lot of long clothing. Still infant baptism. Just two styles of infant baptism. Now, one thing that this group over here has going for them is the right Bible. See, the Orthodox believers of, you know, Romania, Russia, Greece, whatever, they actually have a Textus Receptus based Bible. They have a preserved Bible that's passed down. Whereas these people over here, the Roman Catholics, they have their own corrupt Bible. This is your Vaticanus and Sinaiticus crowd. And this is where, you know, the NIV and every, you know, watch New World Order Bible versions where we kind of show the connection here with that. Okay, so that's AD 1054. Well, in the 16th century, the 1500s, we have what's known as the Protestant Reformation, right? And in the Protestant Reformation, you have men like Martin Luther, right? Which is where we get our Lutherans. Martin Luther was a Catholic priest that said, I never left the Catholic Church, they left me. And sure, he didn't like some things about the Catholic Church, but he kept a lot of the bad things about the Catholic Church, like infant baptism, okay? Like transubstantiation which means that when they eat the, the bread and drink the wine, it's literally the body and blood of Christ, not symbolic. That's in Martin Luther's own catechism if you go back and read his own writings. Okay, Martin Luther also teaches that, you know, baptism is part of salvation, part of having your sins forgiven and so forth, okay? So that's the Lutherans. Then you have another major reformer known as John Calvin, right? And John Calvin is where you get your churches that have the name Reformed in them. They're looking to John Calvin, okay? Dutch Reformed, French Reformed, you know, in the, hung the Hungarians have a Calvinist Reformed uh, movement there. So you got your Lutherans, you got your Reformed or Calvinists. Okay, then over here you've got your Presbyterians, okay? And the Presbyterians go back to a guy by the name of John Knox, okay, in Scotland. So pretty much the same doctrine of John Calvin, but John Calvin's in Switzerland. John Knox is over in Scotland. You got the Presbyterians. Then you have another group during this Protestant Reformation of the, of the 1500s known as the Church of England, right? Or we'll just call them Anglican. And the Church of England was started by Henry VIII. Henry VIII wanted to divorce his wife. The Pope would not grant him that divorce, so he broke up. And in the real early days of the Church of England, their doctrines were pretty much identical to the Roman Catholics. But throughout the course of the 1500s, a lot of people within the Church of England started pulling them further and further away from the Catholic Church to where by the end of the 16th century, they were a lot different than the Catholic Church. But here's the thing, they never got all the way away from it. They still hung on to some of the doctrines of mama up here, okay? So you've got your Anglicans, okay? Then, you know, also you have a movement of, and, and, and look, don't get real strict with me on this chart. This is a simplification. 
Obviously, it would take many hours and days and weeks to go into every little twist and turn in detail. I'm trying to simplify this and just make it easy to understand. And generally, this is true, what I'm saying. This is a basic, just a, obviously we could go into every detail, but I'm just giving you the basics here. You know, out of the Anglicans, you've got movements from England like the Puritans, right? And the Quakers coming out of that movement, okay? And by the way, you know why they're called Quakers? Because like an earthquake, they go like, uh, that's what an earthquake does, right? Because that's what they do. It's demonic. It's weird. That's why they were called Quakers. Because they don't call themselves Quakers. They call themselves what? Man, we need this sermon. Society of Friends. And if you talk to people that say they go to the Friends Church or the Society of Friends, they are Quakers. And then the Puritans. The Puritans want to purify the Church of England. Okay? Now, a lot of people will lift these people up as, oh, yeah, these guys were great. The Puritans were awesome. You know, I mean, it has pure in the name. But here's the thing, though. These were the type of people, like, we still have these people today because there's nothing new under the sun. These are the people that think everything's pagan. Wedding rings are pagan. Circles are pagan. Triangles are pagan. Squares are pagan. You know. So these people are just overboard. No musical instruments. We can only sing a cappella, which is obviously biblically ridiculous since the Bible praises, you know, the use of musical instruments. They're just, you know, we need to come and sit on a wooden stump and listen to a five-hour sermon and no fun allowed and stuff like that. That's this group right here. You know, everything's wicked, everything's pagan, nothing's okay. All right. Then, from the Anglican, when the Anglicans came to America, Church of England doesn't sound that cool when you're in America and you're not in England, right? So then they change it to Episcopalian. So if you want to know who the Episcopalians are, they are Anglicans. And then today, this has evolved into one group of Episcopalians amongst blacks known as the African. Actually, you know what? Before I get to the African Methodist Episcopalians, let me say this. There was a guy by the name of John Wesley who was one of these guys, Episcopalian. And then he said, we need to get back to more biblical methods. So he became a Methodist Episcopalian which obviously eventually they dropped the Episcopalian and just became known as Methodist. Then we could go down further and there's a church called an AME church. Who's ever heard of churches that are called so-and-so AME church? That stands for African Methodist Episcopalian. Why would you put the name of a nationality in your church? I thought we we're all of one blood. I thought, we're all, I thought that God's house was supposed to be the house of prayer for all nations. I mean, what, what, should we, what if we had like, well, we're white Baptists. We're Caucasian. <laughs> We're Caucasian Baptist. We're European Baptist. No, it should just be for all nations. But this group, you know, African Methodist Episcopalian is an AME church. That's what that stands for, okay? Then we've got over here, if we come back to these people over here of the Puritans, okay, then they evolved into the Congregationalists. And again, this is kind of a, a simplification. But they got into your Congregationalists. And then during the uh, 1800s, you have all these movements of these ecumenical revivals. It's kind of where the non-denominationalism started coming in of, hey, all these denominations are wrong. Uh, we need to you know, get back to the Bible and so forth. But there were a lot of false teachers that sprung up during that second great awakening. And so out of these type of people, Methodist type people, Congregationalist type people, especially, you have uh, all of these cults spring up in the 1800s, the cults. And what do I mean by the cults that came out of these groups? We have, of course, and I'm running out of room on my board here, but we have, of course, what are the major cults? Mormons, right? Mormons, 1830. You got your Seventh day Adventists, you got your Jehovah's False Witnesses. And you've got, of course, um, the, the Campbellites, okay? And the Campbellites today are known as the Church of Christ. And the distinguishing thing about the Campbellites was they said, well, baptism's by immersion, but you have to be baptized to be saved. So they still hung on to that saved by baptism thing from mama up here, or great grandmother, as it were. But they said, well, it's by immersion, but you have to be baptized to be saved. Of course, this guy, uh, Joseph Smith, he, he, he didn't want to be baptized by anybody, so he baptized himself. <laughs> now, later, he changed the story and lied 
He be literally, and look, when you're baptizing yourself, you have a problem because, you know, if you can't find anybody on the planet that agrees with you, you might be starting a cult, right? I mean, if the Holy Spirit's always been around, the Bible's been around, why are you having trouble finding anybody that believes like you? Because you're a cult leader. That's why. And so this guy baptized himself. Later, he lied and said, well, me and my buddy baptized each other. Wasn't as weird as you're making it. But no, he literally, you know, <laughs> baptized himself, you know. Maybe even beat himself up a few times. I don't know. But anyway, so that's these people, all your cults. And the Campbellites today are known as Church of Christ. That's your Duck Dynasty yeah. hero. Yeah. That long-haired hippie that you idolize. He believes that you have to be baptized to be saved. He's a follower of this Campbell cult leader from the 1800s, okay? Then you've got over here the Congregationalists merged, or, or I'm sorry, evolved into what today we know as the United Church of Christ. So, you know, don't confuse the Church of Christ with the United Church of Christ. Now, United Church of Christ is Obama's denomination, okay? Enough said, right? But the United Church of Christ here in Phoenix has a big picture on the outside. They had a banner up that literally has a picture of a man and a woman, two men and two women saying it's all fine. And it says literally, we're on the side of love. And, there's, and it has a rainbow flag. So that, that should tell you something about these people right here. Now look, this shows you where your basic denominations of today have come from, doesn't it? I mean, think about that. I mean, can somebody think of a denomination that I haven't really covered? Throw it at me. Let me tell you where it came from. Anybody? I mean, we're covering the big ones, right? The Lutherans, the, you know, the Reformed Church. And by the way, there's people that call themselves Reformed Baptist. This is who they're really following. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. They're like 99% Reformed and 1% Baptist, okay? So, you know, these phony Reformed Baptists. But you got the Lutherans, the Reformed, the Presbyterian, the Anglicans, the Episcopalians, your Methodists. You want to know where they came from? Of course, the Mormons. Uh, Seventh Day Adventist, Jehovah's Witness, and Campbellites are all a bunch of cult members. Then you got the super liberal, you know, United Church of Christ over here, and so on. And so, where did it all come from? You know, it's all a spinoff of this, and it all has a lot in common with this yeah. right here. Then, a separate line that's not a part of this family tree is Baptists. Yeah. Baptist is just a catch all name that has been applied to people who aren't part of this family. Not part of this group, not, part of, not protesting things in the Catholic Church, not trying to purify the Catholic Church and fix it, but the people that said, it can't be fixed. We don't want anything to do with it. These are just, it's just independent people that are just independently with separate churches, doing their own thing, never were part of this, don't want to be part of this, don't want to fix this because you can't fix it. It's of the devil. So that shows you where these come from. Now look, you see why it's important to be a Baptist? Amen. Because you don't want to have anything to do with the Roman Catholic Church. Look, have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. We don't want to be connected with the Catholic Church in our family tree. Now, 